Welcome to Valparaiso Baptist Church and a special welcome from your theater team, Rolling Stone Theater Ministry. We are so excited that you are here today. I know that this is a little bit different, uh, probably something you didn't expect, but uh, the, the team here, we've all been working really, really hard to bring uh, something special and something new for you today. So um, please make sure that you all be mindful that the actors are going to be using the aisles. So you'll see them walking all around the space. So once the production starts, if you could try to stay seated so that an actor doesn't end up in your lap, uh, we would appreciate it. Also, please make sure that your cell phones are turned all the way off, please, because they can interfere with our wireless microphone system. And then you are more than welcome to take a photo or video, but please make sure there's no flash because we do have students and my husband in the cast. And if there's a flash, it's like cats and they're like, whoa. So please make sure all those are, are off. You guys have a job, and that is to interact during this production. Many of these people, it's their very first time ever doing anything like this. So the more that you interact by laughing or Greg Howard giving me some amens, things like that, uh, they will feel your energy and be excited uh, to participate with you. So are you guys ready for a great show? Let me hear an amen. Woo! And claps. Good. Let's try it one more time so they, they can hear you all the way in the back. You guys ready for a great show? Woo! Awesome. Without any further ado, please enjoy Shepherds and Kings. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, through the fields we go, laughing all the way. Ha, <laughs> ha, ha! Stop singing! I told you this was a bad idea, but no, you had to drag us out here in the middle of nowhere to get our own tree. Now look at us. We're lost, cold, and tired. And this magnificent tree that's half bald from dragging it clear across the state. We're not lost. As for the bald part of the tree, that can go up against the wall. And if you'd remember, I told you to wear your old clothes. We don't really have any old clothes. <laughs> we do now. I don't see why we just couldn't use our regular tree. No mess, no bother, and it's even pre-lit. Now, Alice, we said that we were going to get back to the way that Christmas used to be. But now with my job and your committees and the kids and their tech toys, we're drifting apart. We need to make a change. And what better time than Christmas? Hey, can we take a break? This tree is getting heavy and I'm getting sticky with all this gunk coming off of it. That's resin, son. It'll come off. Are you sure? My glove won't come loose. Are we anywhere close to getting out of here? I'm supposed to be meeting Simone at the mall later. We're trying, dear. But your father has gotten us lost. We're not lost. Jenny, have you been able to get a signal yet? Maybe we can call for help. That would be a big fat no. We are in a complete dead zone, much like my social life is going to be if I don't get out of these mountains pretty soon. Gerald, I'm beginning to worry. It's getting dark. I'm trying, dear, but I think the batteries are going dead. Oh. Ah! Dad! Someone's shooting at us! It's fine. I'm sure it's just a hunter. Maybe they can help us. Dad, 
Go see. Yes, Gerald, go see. Are oh. you folks all right? Sure didn't mean to scare you, dude. Oh, you didn't scare us. We were just unaware that anyone else was out here. Oh, it ain't any wonder with all that ruckus he was a making. That'll be enough, Jake. I guess they got as much right to be out here hunting as we do. Uh, actually, we're not exactly hunting. Well, we are. But it's only for a Christmas tree. Yeah, but now we're lost. <sighs> we're not lost. I've got everything under control. See? Jake, you better go pick up that turkey. Get it home to your ma. Me and June will stay here and see if we can help these good folk. It's your thing, Pa. Oh, and tell her not to expect us none too soon. This might take a while. Yes, Pa. Well, that's awfully kind of you, but I must but insist. But nothing, Gerald. It's getting dark, and I don't relish the idea of tramping around in the dark. If Mr... Oh, Shepard, ma'am. Buford Shepard. Out there was my son, Jake. This is my daughter, June. We need to get out of these woods before things get worse. That's just a neighborly thing to do. Now, where'd you figure you parked this here car of yours, Mr... King. Gerald King. This is my wife, Alice, my son, Jacob, and my daughter, Jenny. Well, pleased to make your acquaintance. Now, where do you figure you put that there vehicle? Well, I parked it next to a big rock, if that helps. We have a passel of rocks over there. Anything else? Ooh, ooh. There were some holly bushes close by. I'm sorry, that still don't help very much. Hey, maybe I should jimmy up a tree and see if I can take a look-see. Well, you're not as springy as you used to be, and Mom would have my hide if you were to fall. Now, never you mind, June. Y'all sit tight, we'll be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Oh, wait! Wait, wait, wait. Take this with you, maybe you'll get better signal up there, you know? Hey, take this too. Give me a yell if you see any bars. Thank you, but I don't... I think they should be holed up for the winter by now. What did she mean by that? Does she mean there are real bears up here? Cool. Bears! Now calm down. I'm sure they're in hibernation, like she said. Besides, once they help us get our bearings, we'll be out of here in no time. Now where have we heard that before? You're not helping things, Alice. No, look. Here's your little doodad back. Y'all just better come with us until we get things sorted out. Are you sure about this, Dad? Remember, they have guns, and we can't stay out here all night. (laughs) Now, son, we're going to have to trust them. Your mother's right. Now you listen. You get that turkey, son? Yes, ma'am. Done cleaning gave it to Maisie. Well, where's your pa on June? I left them back in the woods with some city slickers. They done and got themselves lost. Land stay. What are them people doing up here in the dead of winter? Well, it's a good thing you all come across them. It's supposed to get colder than a whale digger's butt tonight. Knowing your pa, he'll be bringing them home for supper. You know we can't be turning away folks in weather like this. Well, I guess that means me, Maisie, and June will be sleeping in the barn tonight. Quit your fretting. It was good enough for the baby Jesus, and it's good enough for you, too. Now, get! Yes, ma'am! I got the turkey soaking in the salt water, Ma. That's good. Jake told me that your Paul might be bringing some folks home for supper. Oh, what do you need me to do? Well, I already got some taters peeled and set to boiling. You go on down to the cellar and fetch some collard greens. I can make them up real quick, and we can make a corn pone. Who are these folks, anyway? Oh, just some city slickers that up and got themselves lost. I hope I got enough taters peeled. <laughs> well, I'll peel a few extra just in case. That's good, and we'll get started on the ham hocks for the oh, greens. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Anybody home? Oh, uh, quit your bellering, Esther. I ain't ever bellered in my whole life, Rufus. I'm just trying to let them know we're here. Yoo-hoo! We're right here, Granny! You don't have to do all that caterwauling. Can't you? I can't abide a critter in the kitchen. You tell Maisie to take her cats out to the barn where they belong. There ain't no cat in the house, Granny. Now you just sit a spell. I got some corn pone to make. You know, if you were to put a cabbage poultice on those feet of yours, you could soften those corns up. Yes, right. Granny. I'll do just that. Won't work none for bunions, but corns, that's a different story. Yes, Granny. You just make yourself at home. I got some supper to make. For bunions. Never mind, Esther. She's gone. You can tell her about the bunions later. I'm 
onions. No, thank you. They give me indigestion. You know that, Rufus. What's gotten into you? I'm sorry. I guess I just forgot. <sighs> if I had onions, I'd be up most of the night with the vapors. You know how I am. I sure do. What's that you say? Speak up, Rufus. A person shouldn't go around mumbling if he has something to say. I said I'm going to tell Velma about the onions. You do that. That woman's going to be the death of me. Grandma! You know, oh. I better go help Velma. Make sure she ain't using no onions. <laughs> you know Ma ain't going to take kindly granny messing around her kitchen, you know. Oh, your Ma can handle herself. Where's your Pa? Oh, he's out in the woods helping some city folk who got themselves lost. <laughs> oh, Aunt Trixie, Aunt Trixie, what are y'all doing here? Ma wasn't expect you till tomorrow. I know, but when I got up this morning, my lumbago was starting to act up. That's a sure sign the weather's about to change. So we decided to come over early and bring your Christmas presents to you. Where would you like me to put them? I'll just take them. You get over by the fire and warm yourselves up. Thank you. How do, Rufus? Where's Esther? She's out in the kitchen tormenting Velma. <laughs> now, where'd she get a notion like that? <laughs> Guess she didn't hear something just right. Rufus Shepard, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why don't you go off and get that woman a hearing aid? Uh, you know how stubborn that sister of yours is. She just won't hear of it. <laughs> get it? She won't hear of it. Get the onions out of there. You just go and check the ham. Oh, I best go see if I can keep the peace. What's that girl talking about? Oh, Buford and June's in the woods helping them city folk track down their vehicle. Well, he better hurry. If my lumbago is right, we're in for some nasty weather tonight. Come on, Truce. Let's go see what's been in the kitchen. Can y'all hold it down? You're going to wake the dead. Who's dead? Ain't nobody dead. I said you're going to wake the dead. Well, of course we'll go to the wake. Is anyone called the preacher? <laughs> you can put your coats over there and get next to the fire. Well, we sure hate to be putting you out like this. Oh, can't let a body stay out in weather like this. Hey, Paul, where's Velma? These folks need to be using the phone. Oh, she's in the kitchen with your aunties. I'll give her a wide berth if I was you. I wish I could. Mr. King here needs to use the phone, and Velma's the only one that keeps up with the schedule. Schedule? Yep. We're on a party line. And those biddies are real sticklers about the schedule, too. You forgetting your manners, boy? Oh, I'm sorry, Pa. Mr. King, this is my Pa, Rufus Shepard. Pa, this is Gerald King and his wife, Alice, and Jenny, and, uh... Jacob. That's right. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Shepard. Pleasure's all mine. You get lost, eh? We certainly did. I don't know what we would have done if your son hadn't come along when he did. Velma, this here's the King family. There's Gerald, his wife Alice, and Jenny and Jacob. And now, everybody, this is my wonderful wife, Velma. How do? I hear y'all need to be using the phone. If it's not too much of a bother. Well, it's supposed to be Bessie Mae's turn at it, but I'll see if she can spare a minute. This being an emergency and all. We hate to be a bother. Oh, it ain't no bother at all. Hey there, Bessie Mae. This here, Velma Shepard. Just fine. And yourself? Oh, I hate to hear that. Trucy said that her lawn bagel's been acting up too. Just might be that time of year, I reckon. Now, what I need. Oh, hey there, Ernestine. Nice to talk to you too. Bessie Mae, I know it's your turn at the phone, but you see, I got this here emergency. These city folk come up here and lost their vehicle. They can't find it nowhere. Yes, Buford's been out hunting for it. Oh, yeah, he's a mighty fine tracker. Well, that's my kind of you. I know they'll appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you, too. See you at church on Sunday. You, too, Ernestine. Here you go. You better make it quick, though. Myrtle Sue's coming up next. She don't give up the phone for nobody. Paul, Buford, you go on out to the kitchen and eat. I'll just stay here in case these folks need anything else. Would you look at this? I haven't seen one of these in years. What is it, Gerald? It's a rotary dial. You're kidding. <laughs> What's a rotary dial? Well, see, you dial your number with this here wheel just like I'm doing now. Wow, look at that. 
Whoa, this is so cool. My friends will never believe this. I'm going to have to leave a message. Hey, Jim, it's Gerald. We're up here on Iron Mountain, and we're having a little bit of car issues. You see, we don't have any cell service up here, so you're going to need to come get us. You can reach us at 224 555 8992. We're at a Buford Shepherd's residence over at, uh, hey, where are we at again? You're at Possum Creek Holler. We're at Possum Creek Holler. <laughs> uh, hello? Hello? Well, I hope that went through. I think I lost connection. Shouldn't you try someone else? I don't want to be a burden to these people any longer than we have to. Nonsense. You ain't no burden. Let's come on out to the kitchen and enjoy some collard greens and ham hocks. Dad? What's a collard? <laughs> I've got a better question. What's a hock? <laughs> no. Now get yourself together, Velma. Did you see the way those folks looked at the table? Like they'd never seen such a feast in all their born oh. days. They did seem lost for words, didn't they? And did you see the way them young and dressed? The fridge that them gals have on is nothing but rags. There ain't even enough cloth left to sew a path to. Oh. You know, the boy ain't much better. I bet if and he was to sneeze right big, he'd be losing those britches of his and he'd be standing there in his all-togethers. Oh. I bet they hand-me-downs. You know they never did see a telephone before what? either? I heard it with my own ears. I uh, know. Uh, they even took a picture of it. Oh. It's just plum pitiful. Well, you know the Lord puts people in our lives for a reason. Oh, yeah. So I figure we're supposed to help these folks out. Uh-huh. Well, I got plenty of canned goods. After dishes, me, Lucy, and Macy will put together a basket for them to take with them. That's a fine idea, but you best get back to your guests before they go missing you. And while you're at it, fetch Jake and June, for we got some errands to run. What you got in mind? Now, never you mind. Just send them on out. We'll be back directly. I will. What you need, Aunt Trucy? I need you to pull the truck around. We're going to make a trip to Sam's feed store, and I don't see good at night. You'll have to drive. But he ain't open this late. Don't fret none about that. He'll go in for me. That's right. Sam's sweet on you, ain't he? Mind your own business and go get that truck. Yes, yes ma'am. Wrong <laughs> way. Now, you said you was kin? No, ma'am. I said we were kings. I don't recall seeing you at any of the reunions before. <laughs> don't mind her, Miss Alice. Now, Granny, you just sit down and behave. These folks got enough troubles. They're in trouble, you say? Ain't with a law, is it? Don't want to be spending Christmas in jail from hiding no criminal. Must be from Velma's side of the family. Paul, do something, will ya? She's about to get plumb out of hand. Now, Esther, these people are not in trouble with the law. They're not kin either. They're the kings, just like we're the shepherds. Kings and shepherds. Are you fixing to tell the Christmas story? You know how I love that story. Macy, get your grandpa the Bible. Grandpa? Might as well. Get no peace till we do. Y'all might as well get comfortable. Looks like Paul's getting ready to tell one of his stories. Very well then. Maisie, can you do it this year? Uh, all righty then. Um, Luke 2, verses 1 through 16, and Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. <clears throat> and it came into pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, saying that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every man unto his own city. And so Joseph came up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, and into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, uh, to be taxed with Mary his wife, being great with child. And so it was that the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And when Mary brought forth her firstborn son, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, for there is no room for them in the inn. Bah, bah. It feels like there's something special going on tonight. 
Like there's mad like there is magic in the air. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, watching over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. But the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And unto you, born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which shall be, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And when the angels were gone away into heaven, the shepherds looked to one another and said, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass that the Lord hath made known unto us. Let's make haste. And they made haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And they rejoiced. For unto us a son is born. For unto us a child is given. And he shall have the government upon his shoulder. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod the king, there came three wise men from the east to Jerusalem. They addressed King Herod, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and will go to worship him. And he, Herod, said unto them, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, so that I may worship him also. Let's go find the king. We will bring him these valuable gifts to show our respect and love. And when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which was in the east came before them, till it stood over where the young child was. And they rejoiced with great joy. The star has led us to him. Now let us go inside so that we can worship him. And when they had gone inside, they had seen the young child and Mary, and they fell down and worshipped him. And then they presented unto him treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Over 2,000 years ago, God sent Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and to be our Savior. Jesus was born so that we may, be, we may be born again to return to live with God someday. So let's rejoice greatly this Christmas season. For unto all of us, a Savior is born. You know, when I was a youngin, I asked my pappy, why well, God only told the kings and shepherds about the birth of the Christ child. Wouldn't you think he would tell the innkeeper he could have brought him in out of the cold? But Pappy said that wasn't God's plan. He said he had a sneaky way of hiding things in plain sight. You know, I always thought by telling the kings and the shepherds, he was encompassing all of mankind. The kings represented the richest of the earth, and the shepherds represented the poorest of the earth. But if you were, and if you were to dig a little deeper, you'd find out that that represents the Christ child himself. I don't follow. Uh, well, when the baby grew up, he called himself the Good Shepherd, and that he would lay down his life for his sheep. And that's just what he did, didn't he? Even today, he wants to lead, guide, and direct us, just like a shepherd does. And as for the kings, Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. And someday he'll come in all his glory to claim his throne. Well, I guess I just never looked at it that way before. Like I said, sometimes God hides treasure in the field. You just got to do a little digging to find it. You're right. You know, I'm glad we got lost. In a way, we were like the biblical kings. We were up here searching for Christmas, only we thought we could find it in our Christmas tree. What we should have been looking for was the child of Christmas, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we certainly didn't need to traipse all over the countryside to find him either. 
I get that now. But hey, at least we got our family Christmas memory. We won't forget this escapade anytime soon. <laughs> That's for sure. I guess like the shepherds of old, you all have led us back to the true meaning of Christmas. Well, that is what a shepherd's supposed to do. <gasps> hey! I just realized! Our name is King, and your name is Shepherd! Well, duh, Sherlock. Kids, behave yourselves. You're guests in this house. Oh, let them be. Oh, you're right, little missy. It's one of God's sneaky ways of hiding things in plain sight. <gasps> Good, you're still here. I got you young and something for Christmas. Go ahead and open them up. Now, we didn't have your exact sizes, but they hitched together at the top. So you won't be losing them in a stiff wind. But That was awfully nice of you, Miss Trucy, but you didn't have to do that. We know it ain't much, but it'd be a bit smart warmer than those britches they got on now. Um, we have some good news. Tell them, Jake. We found your truck. What? How? Where? It wasn't exactly us. We told Sam about you guys, and he said that Bill Carter was in the store earlier. Complain about how somebody blocked the old sawmill road with the truck. Wow. Well, kids, get your coats. They finally found our truck. It's about time that we get out of the way of these fine folk. Now, you weren't in the way. We was mighty proud to have you. But you take care of going down that mountain, though, here. And it's starting to spit snow. But then I knowed it would. My lumbago ain't never been wrong. Yeah. Well, I certainly don't know how to thank you. Well, it sure was our pleasure. Hey, maybe you can come back sometime for a visit. Oh, that would be nice. But I'll do the driving next time. I heard that, Alice. Here you go. We put a basket of canned goods together for you. There's a slab of ham from the smokehouse in there for you. You should have a nice Christmas dinner in there. Oh, you really shouldn't have. You all have done enough. Oh, no problem. We got plenty. Well... I guess it's time for us to say goodbye. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas Merry to you, Christmas. too, sir. To Jake and June, go get their truck and go lead them down that mountain. Sure Hell thing, yeah. sure thing, Pa. Follow us! <laughs> Don't forget the tree! <laughs> wow, imagine that, to come all this way and forget that silly tree. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have been that bad. After all, we found something more important. True. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks for coming. Thank Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Bye. That was nice. That was so nice. Now, whose kin did you say they were again? Grandma! <laughs> them one more round of applause, would you? Well, I would be remiss if I didn't go ahead and speak a little bit about this play. So today, I just want to bring a very short message. I know we've had a long play, so I won't linger for very long. But today, I'd like to bring a short message to you about the reason for the season. You see, in the play we found that the King family could really relate to so many of us around the holiday season. Let's just admit it. When we get to Christmas time, we tend to get pretty busy, don't we? I don't know about you, but personally in my life, I have felt the busyness of the season. Anyone else feel like this has been a busy time of year? I figured there'd be some of you that would say that. The time has really flown. And at times, I found that I've actually allowed how busy this season can be to be a distraction. It actually robbed me of the joy that the season should bring. Instead of rejoicing 
At times, I found that I was fretting. Instead of experiencing cheer, there were times that I was experiencing fatigue instead. And much like the King family, I allowed so many other things, and here's the thing, they were good things, right? I've allowed so many good things to come into my life that it stole away the joy and the meaning of Christmas. Here's a fact that I want you to keep near to your heart because I've learned it this year especially. Good things are not always the best things, so don't get the two confused. You see, just like the King family, they were overwhelmed with their desire to create that family Christmas memory. All of their energy, all of their effort was put into getting that Christmas tree together and having that perfect snapshot photo. Now, were any of those things bad things? No, right? In fact, family time and making memories, those are all good things. But in their righteous pursuit of the good, they missed out on the blessing that is the best, right? And so the busy season can sometimes overwhelm us and we can learn a lesson from the shepherds who taught the kings how to slow down just a minute for the holidays, to take in the real meaning of Christmas, that the God of the whole universe cared enough for you and for me that he was willing to take on human flesh and make his dwelling among us in the person of Jesus Christ. Here's what the scriptures say about that. In uh, the book of Matthew chapter 1, it tells us that while he uh, thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take you, Mary, uh, to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived of her is the Holy Spirit. Uh, she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." And so it was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin will be with child and bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. In that short Christmas passage there in Matthew uh, chapter 1, we find some really good news. First of all, we find that in the Christmas season, we're reminded that God sent deliverance to us. Have you ever been in a spot where you needed somebody's help, where you needed some resources and you didn't have the ability to save yourself? Let me share with you a time that I experienced. Back in college, you know, one time I was a poor college student. Anybody ever feel that before, poor college students? Give me a holler if you're a poor college student. All right, there's a few of you out there. All right, when I was a poor college student, you know, I was so broke that one time I went into the coffee shop in Chicago and I couldn't afford to pay for my coffee. I didn't realize how low my bank account had got, and I went to go swipe that card at the register for the already expensive Starbucks, but in Chicago, it's like two times more expensive, right? So I slide that thing, and man, I was so embarrassed. I got declined. I was like, well, what am I gonna do? They've already started to make the drink, and so I started to tell them that I didn't have the money, and then this lady stepped up behind me, and she said, put it on my tab. I'll pay it. You know how much of a relief that was to me? To this day, I'll never forget the kindness that that woman paid to me. You see, such a small gesture, but it meant so much to this poor, broke college student. It was that feeling of love and that feeling of gratitude. Well, the gospel is a lot like that. According to the passage, the Bible tells us that we have a debt that we cannot pay. There's an IU, IOU tab in our eternity that I can't pay for and that you can't pay for. But God, that's my favorite thing to say, but God had a plan. He stepped into human history, and while every other major world religion says you have to work your way up to God, the Bible tells us that God came down to us in the flesh and he made his dwelling among us. And he became obedient even to death on a cross. And there Jesus was on the cross of Calvary as he was shedding his blood. What he was doing is he was paying the IOU, the tab that we couldn't pay. And he paid it on our behalf for such great things. So just imagine, that's why the angels announced Behold, we bring you glad tidings of great joy for all people. You see, the Christmas story gives us something to rejoice in, something to be joyful about. 
Then lastly, one other good news that we found in the passage is that the Bible tells us God is with us. He is with us. Verse 23 says that, Behold, the virgin will be with child, bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Isn't it such a comfort just to know that somebody is there for us? You know, if you've ever been through a tough time before, I know like if Kelly had a rough day at work, one of the things that she wants when she gets home is to have her loving husband there just to be a shoulder to cry on, just to have an ear that's open to listen, and just having somebody there. Believe me, it's usually bad if I try to say something. So just being there, right? Just being there is a good thing, right? And so that's the story of Christmas too, that in a very real sense, God is with us. It's a reminder that God has never left us. He's never forsaken us. He promises to be with us no matter what we go through. And friends, he will walk with us through any struggle, any trial, whatever we're going through in life. He wants to be with us. In the book of Psalms, he's described as that good shepherd, to borrow the name from the play, right? Jesus is the good shepherd. And when he came, he not only came to lead us beside the still waters, but he also came to be with us in the valley of the shadow of death. Did you realize in Psalms 23, he was with us through both. He led them beside the still waters, but he also walked with them through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, a, a simple translation of that is this. God will walk with us in the good times, but also the bad times. And so friends, this Christmas season, we can lean on that good news because it really is good news. But here's the reality, and I'm speaking for myself here. I know that life gets crowded. It gets jam-packed around this time of year with so many other priorities that stack up and stack up and stack up. And so sometimes what I found is I allow the real reason for the season to take a back seat in my life. I miss out on the joy that ought to be there in this season because I'm so bombarded with everything else. And maybe you can relate a little bit to that too. I bet there's people in this room that feel exactly like I do. I know for a fact that there's people in this room today who have families that have been bombarded with busy schedules. You've had basketball, you've had theater rehearsals, you've had et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Stack up the calendar and you guys have been doing it. In this room, we have families that have dealt with death of loved ones, of illnesses that are plaguing their family. In this room, we have families that are struggling to make ends meet, and the, the times are tight right now in the Christmas season. In this room, we have a variety of situations, all of which, if we're not careful, they can rob us of our joy. They can take our sight off of the real meaning of Christmas. So regardless of where you're at this morning, no matter the distractions that may be plugging you, no matter what the struggles may be this Christmas, I want you to remember that there's one thing that we all can rejoice in, that at the Christmas season, we remember Jesus came in the flesh, a Savior, Christ the Lord. And we can all take comfort in the fact that there was a birth of that Savior some 2,000 years ago, the real reason for the season. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes as we reflect and take in this message. As everyone has their eyes uh, closed and their heads bowed, i just like to simply say this. If you're here today and you didn't know the real reason for the season, if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, let me urge you to reach out to him this Christmas season. The Bible tells us is that he's a good savior, a good shepherd that wants to care for us and love us. And so I would, I would encourage you, call upon him today. The Bible says that we can have certainty about our eternity, and it's so simple. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're here today and you've not made that decision, I urge you to reach out and make that decision today. Maybe right there in the privacy of your seat, you would pray something like this. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. I've, I've messed up but I'm so thankful that you came to deliver me. I place my faith in Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and resurrection, and I trust you for my salvation. Thank you for saving me. 
If you prayed something like that right there in the privacy of your seat, I would encourage you to reach out to me after service today. I would say slip up your hand, but to be truthful, I can't see your hands right now. So reach out to me after service, and please let me know that you made a decision to follow Christ. We would want to celebrate that with you. But let me ask one last question as we close. I wonder if there's anybody here that would just say, you know what, Pastor, pray for me, because if I'm honest, I let the busyness of this season rob me of some joy. I wonder if anybody would slip up their hand and say, Pastor, pray for me today. This busy season has me distracted and I need prayers. See those hands. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, as we close out this time together, Lord, I, I lift up each and every person here today. Lord, uh, this season is busy. There's so many distractions that come our way. And so, Father, I just pray that in the midst of the busyness that we would remember the real reason for the season. Thank you, Lord, for the good news of Jesus Christ. Lord, his birth meant so many good things. He came to deliver us, and he came to promise that he would be with us. And so, Lord, help people to cling to that today, that no matter the circumstance they're going through, whatever their struggle may be, that they would remember this Christmas season, that we all have reason to be joyful. And we ask this all in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, before I dismiss you, I got a couple quick thank yous that I would like to cover, and then I'm going to ask the cast and crew to come out too in just a moment. But first, we've got some special thank yous for you, okay?